Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to the Life's Good. My name's AJ. I live in the northeast of England. This is my channel. I'm in the greenhouse. It's been a sunny day and I was just checking the temperatures. I know we had some really cold weather the other week. I've been resetting my maximum minimum thermometer and checking things. Last night out here in the greenhouse it went down to 5.2 that's plus 5.2 centigrade for the benefit of those that use Fahrenheit that is 41 Fahrenheit it's quite mild compared to what we've been experiencing since Christmas so I'm keeping an eye on things the greenhouse is obviously staying warmer at night and my daytime temperatures are quite warm it's currently 14.2 out here I've got the door open I've got you stood out there looking in um, it's about 14 in the greenhouse mind that's not outside it's been about 11 12 degrees outside today so things are warming up slowly it's only the end of February so it's still a chance that we could still get pretty cold weather so be cautious don't go silly and start putting tender things out in the garden not a good idea but in the greenhouse things are starting to improve temperature wise and I'm now able to start considering sowing and today what I'm intending to do is I've, I've got a couple of packets here last year's seed golden acre primo two that is golden acre cabbage i got some seeds left over from last year it says so by the 2022 so that should still be good i've got some golden acre seed and i've got january king slightly more purple colored cabbage dark green purple uh, january king these are new seeds. I've just purchased these this last week and obviously so by 2024. Again, if we saw the last video, I was talking about seeds, how many in a packet, costs, that sort of thing. In this packet, there's supposedly an average of 350 seeds. I couldn't possibly sow and grow all of these. I've only got a small plot. But... What I'm doing, I'm looking at, I like both of these. I like the Golden Acre, uh, or I say I, the family, me and the wife, Cheryl. Uh, we like all of these. So what I'm going to do, just to start some off, I've got this 24 cell, multi-cell tray. So I'm going to do, or I'm going to sew 12 of the one variety and 12 of the other I'm also going to put probably two seeds per cell and then when they do germinate and start growing I will prick out the smaller and weaker one leaving the stronger one behind gives me a fighting chance to get a number of plants that eventually will be big enough strong enough to go out into my garden so a 24 cell tray two seeds per cell and I'm going to split it in half between the golden acre and the January King I just wanted to show you the other side of the greenhouse um, I've got a few things already happening here my potatoes I've got in a tray there that's my Charlotte potatoes I spread them out in that tray and the idea there is you chit them and that means you allow them to sit and rest there until they start to shoot they should send up little shoots and once they get to a certain point of having quite a few shoots on you can then plant them in your containers or in your garden sitting in front there that's my shallots they're just sitting there waiting and I will put those out on the ground when I think it's about ready and the ground is warm enough I've got a few other things in here. I'm experimenting a little bit with some of it, but um, there's some radishes in that tray there. Some of them have grown, some of them haven't. I have sown those during the winter. 
they're sort of coming on. There's there's a couple of larger ones over the back there, but for the most part, they're, they're not brilliant. But I'm just leaving them there to um, to come on and see what happens with those. And I've got some mixed lettuce leaves in this front tray. I'll probably take those indoors, actually. They've germinated. They're coming on. They're looking a bit leggy. So I thought I'll take them in the kitchen because they can come on in the kitchen and we just pinch a few leaves off and put them in sandwiches and things like that. Likewise with the pea shoots that are sitting there. Oops, falling over everything. Um, the pea shoots here, there's just a few in there, but just snip them off, put them in a sandwich or on top of a salad or something. Ideal. I've also got some mustard and cress in this little container here. I've done it half and half, so I've got half of it mustard, half of it cress on kitchen tissue or household tissue. So I've put a fold of tissues in the bottom, made them wet, put the seeds on, and now I keep damping that, and they should produce some nice mustard and cress shoots for us to put on salads and sandwiches. And those two little propagator trays in the back here, they're 40 cell trays with the propagator lid on. There's quite a bit of condensation in there. As you can see, it creates quite a lot of moisture. And those are onions. I have sown onion seeds, and I personally have never grown onions from seed before. So for me, this is a first. I'm sure most of you have tried it, all you regular gardeners, allotment growers and so on, will say, yep, yeah, do it all the time, not a problem, AJ. First time for me, I've always grown onions from sets. This time I've sown some seed and I'm going to see what happens there. I've put them in the 40 cell, multi, multi cell trays. And again, once they've started, they've germinated, they're growing on, they will get transferred out onto the ground outside. Uh, at the back there, what have we got? We've got herbs in here. We've got some coriander in the back left-hand pot, some basil in the right-hand one, and some parsley in this front one. And this little pot here is the salad chard. I've thrown some salad chard seeds in there. They will germinate and grow in there. They're only a small chard plant. Looks a bit like a lettuce leaf or a small beetroot leaf. It's got a red tint to it, lovely in salads, sandwiches and other meals. So there's quite a few things going on in here that I just wanted to point out to you and let you see that my greenhouse is starting to look a little bit productive. Just a quick look across the plot. It looks fairly tidy. There's little or no weed growing on this. I'm very pleased. This no dig method of growing has surprised me that I get very, very few weeds. You get the odd one or two pop up now and again. It's easy just to pick them off, put them in the compost and that's it gone. So this plot is looking really clean and tidy. I would like to point out that against the far wall, so from that corner up to the end of that wall there that little wooden sleeper wall I've actually got a row of broad beans in there and either side of this little keyhole pathway straight up there and on this side up here and also along there I've got broad beans sown in there no sign of them yet I'm hoping to see something emerge over the next week or so but uh, I've got something in the ground at least, that's the main thing. My hedge of raspberries, I'll just try and sort of spin you around a little bit, bear with me. Now you can't see much from here, the light's strange on the fence, but I've got my hedge of raspberries all down there. So as raspberry canes tied back against that fence, I'm looking forward to a crop of raspberries there. And just down below here, you can just see some green shoots there. That's my garlic. And that's all shooting and popping through as well. And I'm going to take you over into that far corner. If you remember a few videos back, I lifted and separated my rhubarb. And it looked quite violent. I, I took the spade and just sliced it straight through that rhubarb crown and planted it out as two separate crowns. I'll take you over there and let you have a look at that now. There you go. All of those are now sprouting lovely. We've got some nice looking rhubarb stems growing with nice dark green leaves on the top. So 
although it looked quite violent, lifting it out of the ground, slicing it in half, and just bung it in a hole in the corner of the plot here. It hasn't done it any harm. Rhubarb is extremely hardy, and this will come on fine. Really pleased with that. And the rhubarb in the top corner of the plot that I left behind is also coming through. And that's looking really good. So we're looking forward to harvesting a lot of rhubarb again this year. And no doubt we'll be making some more rhubarb wine. And rhubarb crumbles. And jam. Rhubarb and ginger jam is a nice one. We'll be making some of that, I know doubt. So everything's starting to burst through. And show life. And start sprouting so signs of spring already and we are right at the end of February so a hint that spring is just around the corner and as if to prove that point my snowdrops are in bloom really pleased we've got a little clump of snowdrops here up in the top garden and if I just whiz you around hang on we have a slightly different variety of snowdrop just behind the garden seat in the corner of the garden. Well, it was just a quick look at a few things today. I took the opportunity to nip outside whilst it was a little bit pleasant. The sun was shining and I had a few things to do. And I needed to sow some cabbages in the greenhouse, mind you, not outside. So I've got some cabbages sown in here, all the other things that are happening and a quick tour of the plot just to let you see what's happening out there and the state of play with everything. Well, I'm going to carry on and sow my cabbages. Two seeds per cell, half the tray, the January King, half the tray, the Golden Acre, or Primo, as it's also called. Thanks for watching. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. I'm almost at 300 subscribers, so a couple more would put me over that 300 mark, which would be a bit of a milestone as far as I'm concerned. And a big thank you to everybody that subscribes to the channel and supports my channel. And a big thank you to everybody that comment and ask questions and so on and so forth. I really do like the interaction. So if you've got any comments, any questions, please don't be afraid to make them. Always pleased to receive those. Whatever you're doing, look after yourselves. Come back and see us soon. You stay safe, be happy, and we'll see you again soon in the Life's Good. Bye-bye now.